Hello, everyone. My name is Tolu Ekundayo. I'm a filmmaker. And here with me today is my amazing brother. Hello, oh, yeah, Ekundayo. Yeah, Thank well, you yeah. for the <laughs> very nice intro. Yes. So this is a new thing we're going to be starting. This is Foreign Film Fridays, FFF or F square or cube. I wasn't good at math, so it's cube, cube. I remembered. It's F cube. Nobody in the comments come after me. So <laughs> this is a new thing we're going to be doing here on this channel. And the movie for today is going to be Pan Labyrinth by Guillermo de Toro, 2006. I'm looking at 2006. The graphics of the animation, CGI, for the fantasy bits, not so bad. It held up pretty well. Me, to me, my biggest surprise was that I would never think in a million years a war film and fantasy could be put together as one. That's just insane in my own part of uh, Guillermo de Toro with all the creepy stuff. I thought it was like a kid's movie. When I was watching it, you realize it's not a kid's movie. <laughs> Originally, when it did come out in 2006, I do, we do remember seeing the posters, right? I've seen the memes and everything. Like, the if memes. you see the posters, like the memes of the, I always saw the oh. hands, eyes and stuff like that, but I never knew where it came from. But like after watching the movie, you know that it's, uh, you will not be surprised that it's a Guillermo de Toro monster because me, That's my biggest shock, uh, from apart from like the one the fantasy side is that I keep on having this debate with myself like is the fantasy aspect real is that's what I want to know because to me I don't feel like the fantasy aspect of the movie is real what do you, you know, think you know what I believe it, it's not real with the ending we got I believe it, it isn't real and Delta shouldn't have been, she dies. He, um, she then sees her quote unquote father and her mother on the throne. And then she goes to sit with them. And then he cuts back to reality as the girl smiles just before she dies. And Mercedes is there um, in the corner crying. And it's, it's a bit too obvious. You don't give us the chance to enter this space of what if it he basically just bring drags us back to reality saying this is a girl just trying to who, who created this world to escape the dealings of war and yes we knew that was the case but at least we would have liked to believe that it's real because that isn't that what fairy tales are? You you like you like to be you want it to so you wanted the fantasy aspect to be real, basically. No, really, I would have liked it to be open. I wanted to I would have liked the option to have my own interpretation. I, I get what you mean because because it, me, some aspect of the fantasy side, because I really thought the fun, the fun, the good guy, I really thought it was like a fantasy representation of the the general himself the general himself like i really didn't have that much trust in the fun in the beginning i was skeptical of his actions i felt like there was this girl that is just so interested in because she grew up reading all those fantasy books and all that so like getting to meet the fantasy character she was that gullible enough that she followed his actions without any question like she was willing to do whatever she needed and um, needed to do. And like, as the phone was the visual representation of like the general, those three fairies, I, I was thinking, you know, like the women in the kitchen, the two old ladies and the and Mercedes. I thought those three women are the, were the representation for those three women in the kitchen. Well, like at, at the end of the movie, it turns out it was nothing like that. It was just something different at all. But hey, I still enjoyed it for what it was. But I had, oh no, I had some really fun moments with uh, like 
I feel like the film had some really fun moments with like um the interaction. Also, the movie kind of played with like the um relationship of like um blended family, kind of like a blended family, like um kind of toxic in that kind of way. Like I don't know how to explain it, but like she was not willing to accept somebody else uh, to replace her father in that type of sense. So like, that was what. That, was now that you bring that up, it draws into the part about the her not accepting reality and making it more obvious that she was just in her head. She, in the beginning, in the car ride, her mother to, tells her to call the man father. It's just a small thing, it's just a word. Yes. She doesn't accept, which shows that she would rather play by her own rules. She wants to do what she wants to do. Exactly. That shows again, when she goes to shake him, she's 10 years old, I think. She yeah, knows, she's 10. She's 10. No proper etiquette. You don't shake with your left hand and you're meeting a military man. People like some people probably comment that oh, um, she's a child. No, you're ten years old. This is this is common knowledge. <laughs> but I, I, you, now that you mentioned that, the fact that she never even called him father, it was always the mother called him father. Anytime yeah. she called out to him, she called him general. Basically, she never called him father, even though she, the mother, was told her that oh, um. Um, this is your father, or like, oh, go and meet your father, or something like that. She never addresses him as father. So that acceptance, she never really, I feel like she idolized her father. And in that sense, I really wanted us to get more to know about his father because we knew nothing. The only thing, little detail we knew was like he was a tailor. And the other side is that from the phone's perspective, which is also from my own imagination, in my interpretation, like from the fans perspective, she said that your father is um, um, the um, king of the underworld, something like that. So like we never really got anything about the father. Which father did you want to get more information of? The king of the underworld or the tailor? I didn't, I, that's the thing. I didn't know the same person because that, I just mentioned those people like the king of the underworld, this might be my anime mindset coming to play. The king of the underworld left, left the underworld, came to the human world, and decided to become a tailor and blend with humans. But as he was blended, he met a pretty um, young woman and decided that, okay, he wants to stay on earth. And he, he died in his mortal earthly form and something like that. So that was the way I interpreted the whole interaction between that sense. Let me break your heart a bit. Oh, God damn it. There was supposed to be a sequel, but then they canceled it. Well, they didn't cancel it, I think, but he left to direct Hellboy 2. So, in a way, I'm not mad because I fucking love Hellboy 2. Hellboy 2 was a masterpiece. We never talk about the reboot. I've not watched the reboot anyway. You see, but don't be surprised down the line, a reboot will happen. It might be a Spanish reboot because I don't think Pan... um, Pan Labyrinth is a Hollywood production from my point of view. I think it's just it's a Spanish production. So I think yeah. Yeah, at some point down the line, Guillermo de Toro or someone else, the studio might be think it's time to bring Pan Labyrinth for a reboot for the newer generation. So if they do that, if they do that, I would I, I have mixed feelings because in this era of reboot, I feel like what's the point of having streaming service where you can watch like all the old movies that people normally talk about but if you are rebooting it for a new generation you can easily just tell them to watch the older because we are basically with reboots i feel like we're basically trying to replace the older movies which i feel like it is wrong to me anyways but anyway you can also think of it as a refresher remembering people don't like watching old things most people don't like watching old things people say oh they like the classics but they will not be watching old things i agree with that because i try watching i i watch all these old movies i like the way they do their camera style there's as little as the cutting 
there's, there's, there's as, there's little cut as possible. It's just this long take, like long take. You never see interaction of you. If you see close up, it has to be like a huge movie. We don't see reactions that much in like all these old, really old movies, like really old movies. Because I could, I understand rebooting those ones, but rebooting movies from two thousands, like come on, just 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 go watch a. Uh, uh, streaming service, uh, pay for streaming service and watch that. Anyway, that aside, that aside, I was really surprised the girl was, that was going to die. In my mind, I thought this was like a Disney story, but with a little bit of harsh. In my mind, in my, if you had told me, told me to bet 20 or a million dollars that the girl was going to stay alive, I would say, yes, the girl is going to survive. But that ended, oof. It pained me. It pained me because I, I, was, that, I never saw it coming. I think that's what really made me like the movie. It's so, should I say, realistic? Yes, because the real world is cruel. And the mother sure. said it. Yeah. The mother said it. You, you, at some point, you, I am Ophelia, you grow up and learn that the real world is a cruel place. Sadly, she learned it at a young age that the world was a cruel place. And bringing to the point of the fairy tale, like she really tried to protect herself mentally from the cruelty of the world. If that those um, fairy tale side of the story were, were only in her imagination, like if that's in her head, she was really trying to protect herself from the cruelty of the world because Ophelia, in, for my recollection of the movie, Ophelia never addressed anything about the war whatsoever we saw the war through like the other characters like uh, mercedes and uh, the doctor and all these other people but ophelia never addressed it and i feel like guillermo used that character of ophelia to basically i don't i don't want to say soften the blow of war but kind of like presents war in more of a softer side on on the screen that's the way i saw it you think softer, but well, I want to think I would like to say it's worse, don't you think? He deceives you with the setting. They're living in a mill in the countryside. Exactly. You have this sense of peace, somberness, nature. But like he he wraps this um should I say box of utter chaos in this nice little bubble of the veneer of peace. And that, in my opinion, makes it worse because look at the, in Safe and Private Ryan, the men out on the part of you know what they're doing. They're out there either to die or to win. Mm -hmm. But here you're in a fascist state. I think that's a, this is under General Franco's reign in Spain. So the people, like the, when they got the rations, the ration tickets, one ration for Oh family, yeah, I remember that take. They're in a state where this, this is their life. The military controls their feeding. It's, it's grim. You have the guerrilla fighters trying to fight for some sort of freedom. The man is not even, this is a remote part of Spain. A subdued part. And it's not even, it's not even an important part of Spain. But these people are trying to fight for what they believe in. But the the garishness of war is so stuck deep into the whole country that even in this rural countryside, you still feel the impacts of the war, the war scheme. That's why we get Ophelia's mind. Like, in my opinion, Ophelia is not, a, she's not a nice child. I don't know if- She was a little, sweetheart to me. I adore little, little segue here. I don't know if this translates well to English or if it's different to the Spanish translation, but when Ophelia meets Mercedes in the beginning, yeah. She tells Mercedes, my mother is sick 
with the baby. How how do you describe your junior brother like that? She is sick with the baby. Why? <laughs> also, the grapes, eating the grapes, the fairies warned you multiple times. It shows her she is a child. Children do get to, do tend to be narcissistic. Like it's it it is normal. We've all well, gone through that phase. We've all gone through that phase. But it shows it's why, like, let's be honest, you would not love every aspect of a child. You will understand why a child does things, but you you will not, unless you're lying to yourself, you will not say you love every aspect of what a child will do. Mm-hmm. So she with the way she has learned to cope, she tries to interact with the outside world in that way. And then that is what punishes her. That is what gets her killed. She could have left with Mercedes. She could have stayed back with Mercedes. But then her the phone comes back and tells her to get her brother. That is ultimately what gets her killed. She would have, she doesn't get her brother. She just goes with Mercedes. The cavalry comes, they get, they rescue them. Everyone is fine. But it's it's a bit narcissistic if you think about it. She believed she was the savior. And that is fine. That's understandable to think. But it just shows how the war or the hellish landscape had warped her mind and brought her to this. Like, it seems like, oh, they're not connected, or it's such yeah. small detail, but it's, it's, it's all added up. And that ultimately was what caused her demise. Adding to that, because I remember, you know, like um, General, the general said that, told um, the mother that the books you're giving her are like, um, are going to basically something about it's harming her in its own way. Like, you've grew like fairy tale stories in some way maybe like um, in some weird way Gemma the Torah is saying fairy tale stories are like um deceive people like they're the main character of the story like they're the hero of the story and Ophelia thought she was the hero of the story and to me I just remember what you said when you mentioned when she met Mercedes in the beginning like when she told Mercedes about the phone Mercedes said that um, when I was young, uh, our parents told her that to be wary of the fun. And the fun was basically in some way led to her death because he lowered her to bring her brother to that same spot. And she did not do exactly what he, and she was killed in that same place where the fun was. It was so a nice one. It was yeah, a good one. Anyway, guys, thank you all for coming up to our channel. And this is, don't forget, this is FQ, Foreign Film Fridays. Here, uh, my name is Tolu Akundayo, a filmmaker. Uh, here with me is my brother once again. Uh, stay tuned for the next episode coming out each Friday. Have a nice one. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a good day, guys. Bless.